Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Ah, yes, Friday. We earned it, didn't we? Of course we did. Hey, later on in the show, we'll identify the latest barn find. But for now, the news. Bloomberg's reporting what we've been saying here for some time now. The electric car market is a flop, especially in China, which once sought to dominate EV technology. Despite a goal to sell 5 million EVs by the end of the decade, EVs only account for 0.02% of the total fleet. There are several reasons why EVs have not caught on, but China's notorious traffic jams mean EV drivers have to shut off their air conditioning or heaters to prevent the batteries from dying on the road. And if you turn off the AC, that means you have to roll down the windows and breathe in all that horrific pollution. Now Chinese regulators are looking at increasing incentives on hybrids and other fuel-efficient models. Volkswagen's chief executive, Dr. Martin Winterkorn, says the company will build a minimum of 10 new assembly plants in the years to come. Seven of the plants will be built in China, where it already has 12 of them. The U.S. could get one plant and four to five models developed specifically for U.S. customers. If all these plants are the size of a typical assembly plant, that would represent an additional 2.2 million units of capacity, which is far more than GM or Toyota have talked about, and that would definitely put VW in the number one slot. The fuel economy test cycle in Europe is far easier than the American test cycle, and it routinely generates higher MPGs than comparable cars tested by the US EPA. Even so, a report out of Europe says automakers use tricks to boost their fuel efficiency and CO2 ratings that border on cheating. I say border on cheating because technically it's not really cheating. Some of the tricks include overinflating the tires and taping over the gaps where the body panels meet. Get rid of those tricks and the study shows a drop of about 12% in fuel efficiency. In other European news, drivers are less likely to drive while using a cell phone than Americans are. A recent survey showed that nearly 69% of American drivers reported using their cell phone in their car in the last 30 days, and 31% of Americans said they had read or even sent a text message. That compares to a high of 59% in Europe to a low of 21% for the seven European countries that were surveyed. You know, I would add that it's even rare for Europeans to eat or drink beverages in their cars too. All right, people, time to reveal the identity of this week's barn find. Yesterday, we showed you this mossy monstrosity submitted by Gordon Garside. And as well, no one correctly guessed it is an Austin A40 Devon. Hey, we finally stumped you. This particular model was sold from 1947 until 1952 when it was replaced by the A40 Somerset. In those five years, Austin managed to build 450,000 cars. That may be why, as we discovered in our research, it's not hard to find decrepit examples of these sedans in fields all over the world. In case you're wondering, in 1948, you could have scooped one of these up with the optional sliding sunroof for a tidy 505 pound sterling. That's 13,237 pounds adjusted for inflation or about $20,000. Now, if you've got a vehicle that you think we should feature, you know where to send it, viewer mail at autoline.tv. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Yeah, you. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the Eyes on IndyCar series. And now it's time for some of your feedback. 
Lex says. The Transit chassis cab nose would look great on a Ford minivan. Any mention by Ford of re-entering the full-sized minivan market with an EcoBoost-powered Freestar, Windstar, or EcoVan? The Transit Connect is just too commercial and boxy, IMHO. Lex, I like your suggestion of transplanting that nose. But Ford has not said peep about getting back into, as you put it, the full-size minivan market. And isn't that one of the greatest oxymorons you ever heard? Full-size minivan. But I know what you mean. Duke wants to know, what are the German companies, specifically MB and BMW, doing to meet CAFE, and will they be able to meet it in two years? Audi is presumably going to ride in on their corporate coattails of VW. Duke, MB is really going to ramp up the smart brand, and CAFE is a key reason why BMW has many. Plus, this is exactly why you hear all about the German brands expanding their diesel lineups, which instantly provide a 30% improvement in CAFE numbers. Speaking of diesels, G.A. Brannigan says, Next should be biodiesel, as I might have mentioned a time or two before. Get the underhood tech up to speed on B50, and we will be rocking. Amen, GA. The fastest way to increase diesel refining capacity is to simply add biofuel to the mix. And guess what? That also instantly lowers greenhouse gas emissions, since biodiesel has a lower carbon content. Edmund T. liked my comment about how Jeep should be thinking about sticking a diesel in the SRT Grand Cherokee. Hey, John, he says, I totally agree. I hope Ralph Gilles is considering an SRT Grand Cherokee Hemi diesel. Whoa, Hemi diesel. They better run out today and trademark that name. M360 heard me say that Cadillac needs more models in its lineup. What new models for Cadillac do you suggest? Maybe a cool convertible or a strong competitor to the MBS class? Well, M360, the hottest sellers in the luxury segment right now are SUVs. BMW and Mercedes have about a half a dozen each. Audi has four of them. Cadillac only has two, the Escalade and SRX. And that is the biggest hole in Cadillac's lineup. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We sure love getting them. And if you're looking for something to do this weekend, may I highly recommend last night's AutoLine After Hours. Our guest was Klaus Busse, the head of interior design at Chrysler. And let me tell you, anyone who's got anything to do with interior design in this business ought to check it out because it really was that good. Anyway, that wraps up this week's reports. We will be back here again on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.